Greetings everyone, it's Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And with me as always, my partner in crime, Chris. How the hell are you today, Chief? All good, all good, all good. And I'm looking forward to this podcast today. Can't oh, wait. We teased it. We teased it a while yeah. back. And we now we have finally got in front of the camera to celebrate the old girl, the medium old girl, and the new girl. And, and everything in between. Like, 50, 52 years now? She's of 52 years young. Actually, probably older, because we've they've taken into account the cage as well. So, like, you know, I mean, this girl yeah. has gone true. And, and the development of her, you know. Exactly. And, like, if we look at it, we have got Matt Jeffries, Gene Roddenberry, Andrew Probert, um, Richard Taylor, mm-hmm. Ryan Church, Sean Hargreaves, John Eves, Scott Snyder, and Ralph McQueen has even put his little artistic work to this famous design of all the ships mm-hmm. probably the biggest most iconic starship in sci-fi history and they're like I, they're about to name a few um, yeah there's sort of people that have worked on this ship but they're the main people that have yeah. worked and like going through it as well like if you if you look at the ncc 1701 enterprise we yeah. have the version of the cage we have the TOS Enterprise. We have the Phase 2 Enterprise. We have the Planet of the Titans Enterprise. We have the TMP Enterprise. We have the 2009 JJ Enterprise, Into mm-hmm. Darkness Enterprise, the Beyond Enterprise, and now we finally have the Disco, Disco Prize. Prize. <laughs> That's a lot of prizes. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> this is sounding like a game show right now. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, like, listen, where we've talked about it. Um, both in this podcast and within our own model reviews, how Star Trek, unlike some other shows, have somehow infused the ships with characteristics just like their actors uh, on the show. And they have their own presence and none more iconic than the Enterprise. It's synonymous with Star Trek, even fans that aren't Star Trek. Here, no the ship. What? I'm pointing at it. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Which one? That one. That the one original. Like, <laughs> well, it's not the you point. look like you look like a little boy in a school. Going, I have a question. <laughs> I've actually a cage one up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like it's 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 just synonymous, and we have spent plenty of hours talking about the Enterprise itself. But um, we're here to talk about the journey off the old girl herself, and to celebrate the newest incarnation as well, fondly known in the community as the Disco Prize. And um, yeah, I I don't think our podcast will be enough to capture it all. So I'm hoping, no. and I am shouting out to everybody in the comments section, share your stories. You know, I'm the first time you saw me. the Enterprise. Yeah. Share, 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 all down below. So yeah. yeah be honest, we are, we're all entitled to our opinions, you know. Exactly. But hopefully it's all love something too bad yeah exactly but the, the funny thing is with this ship and it, it's so funny that a lot of people turned around and said this was the ship that should have been used in 2009 so obviously something was done right mm-hmm mm-hmm i well all i know well i say what i assumed when discovery hit the airwaves and we saw the stylistic uh design office I felt that if people were thinking they were going to see the Enterprise, they were very worried about what they were going to do to her. And when I saw the comments off uh, the end of season one, and they were so positive. Now, there's always going to be criticisms because everyone will have their own idea of what they wanted to see. But hugely, it was very, very positive. And like that, as you said, some people thought this is the ship we should have seen in uh, other incarnations of Trek. But, come here, look. The only person that can answer the question, why wasn't this style of ship used in 2009, is JJ. And this is what we always have tried to say sometimes before. Mm-hmm. Don't criticise the guy that came up with the design. They're following a direction. They're being told what to do. At the end of the day, is we go into work, we are told what we have to do to make money. So, you know what I mean? If you're not a fan of the design, just bear in mind that the, the artist that comes up with these designs is only doing what he's told and it's signed off by somebody else at the end of the day. Yeah, they get a brief. It gets yeah. tweaked, sent back, tweaked, and then you have your, your line producer or your executive producer will then sign it off. Look at the look at the Reliant. Um, that had to be signed off. It was signed off with the upside signature down. upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, we have the Miranda class. But yeah. <laughs> that, that's the process. And I know a lot of people aren't aware of that. And a lot of people are as well. But yeah. I know 
Um, and we've seen it in recent times with the discovery and even with um, uh, Ryan Church's enterprise that there was a lot of vitriol. And I get that because it's such, it's so dear to many people. But um, yeah, know the process and mm. know that there's many factors that will govern a design of a ship. And um, yeah, like again, I know a lot of people who are very much fans of the Kelvin, Kelvin Enterprise. Okay. And um, and each, like I, I put up a picture, I'm working on an Enterprise D uh, uh, graphic myself. And I asked the question, what's your favorite? And you'd have people like, oh, for me, it's the Enterprise E or for me, it's their motion picture. Everyone has their own near and dear uh, Enterprise. And the interesting thing is they all rooted into Matt Jeffrey's design. That was yep. the pinnacle. And when you think back in the 60s, how different that was from other shows at the time. Like we have 2001, Star Wars following, uh, and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, Matt, Matt just Star Wars, yeah. nailed it. Like following, it, yeah, like exactly. Ten years down the line, you know. Yeah. In fairness, what Matt Jeffries was, he came about it from a more practical point of view. He was big into aircraft, and um, he actually was very, very sound, and he looked at practical implications. So, you know, he taught about living space. He taught about engines, mm -hmm. taught about, you know, treating it as a military, looking towards military style craft and making a practical starship as opposed to, at the time, everything being rockets. Yeah, yeah. You know, and part of Gene Roddenberry's specification was he did not want to have rocket trust coming out the back of the ship, you mm -hmm. know, which was very, very forward thinking. And, you know, in fairness, if you look at, uh, you know, like the command module gone to the moon, we don't see a big massive ball of flame coming out. <laughs> no, yeah, you have, you, know, you, have you have your you have your little ohms um, thrusters for you know yeah yeah. So it's you know even even at that stage it was ahead of its time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and it, the one thing that is plain and simple right up to and i think even more so with the disco prize how much of uh of a, of a kind of tribute and homage to the original enterprise we saw all the way through we've had refinements we've had different budgets allowing for further detailing and, and scale and grandeur and like right up to 2017 2018 look how, how much the disco prize links into um the original and maybe the TMP version as well. And I know there's concept art out there that we see different uh, configurations at the Disco Prize as well. But um, yeah, I think she's looking as good as she's ever done. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't wait to see her more in action, hopefully in season two. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I think the biggest thing that people need to, to look forward to, instead of like, yes, we have our old dear, we have the original, that's just right there. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful ship, one of my favorites, fell in love with her the first time I've seen her on TV. Brilliant, yeah. okay. And it's near and dear to me. But like, instead of looking at criticism, if you don't like the Disco Prize, just look at it this way. It's a celebration of that ship 50 years later, that that ship can still be taken and brought into a studio and is reimagined. And I think that's the success of Star Trek. And it's something that we are here today to celebrate. You know what I mean? It is a new ship where, you know what I mean? Everyone's entitled to their opinions and we're going to go through this ship. You know what I mean? And mm. we can't wait to get into it. Exactly. And and one question I'd like to ask you watching this video and, and yourself, Chris, as well. Um, the design of the Disco Prize that we saw at the end of season one, do you feel like it blends well with the other ships that we've seen, like the Shenzhou, the Discovery, the Fleet of the Binary as well? Do you, do you see it stand out as one of their elite ships? You know, the It stands out to me as an elite ship and it should stand out as an elite ship. Elite ship. Um, you know what I mean? you got to realize as well, with, with military craft, air carriers and so forth, you know, how long do these things stay in service? Yeah. And if we do look at the time where um, Discovery is set, it's 100 years into the foundation of the Federation. And there should be so many ships. In my opinion, there should be so many wide varieties. You know what I mean? It's only 100 years of the Federation. You've got Vulcans that still seem to stick to their own ships. But like, you know what I mean? You've got Andorians, Tellarites. You've got so much technology all being merged 
in this period. So there has to be a change. We mm. know that Shinjo is old, but we don't know the age of some of the other ships. So where they might go and you might go, geez, that looks really, really futuristic. Maybe the tech on it is really, really old. And yeah, she does stand out. And I think she should stand out because we know that this ship will carry forward. We know that the cross fields, we don't see them later on down the, the line. So yeah, yeah, I was, I was quite happy when she introduced herself. She had that special feel. Um, so special enough that it looks as though she carries her own uniform, which I'd say will continue on with all the others of her class, mm-hmm. which to me makes sense. It's the elite in the fleet. So they get to wear the gold and blues and reds. Well, you don't really want to wear red unless you're in engineering. Well, yeah, or a different yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. <know. laughs> um, but... Um, a lot of fans had the pleasure of um, a great um, panel over in DST, yeah, where very good. we had John Eves, the legend, the prolific designer. That man has touched so many ships across Star, Star Trek, Trek Five to present. Um, I think he definitely is the record now for most productions. Yeah, and, in Star and Trek, rightfully so. Like literally. Yeah. Uh, he achieved legendary status a like long time that's, ago. That's some achievement in itself. From Star Trek Five to even working on some the JJ movies, which you know, and I know fans are going to criticise about the JJ. Look, mm. I'm not too keen on the JJ prize. I do like the latest incarnation, even before the A. I do think in in Beyond, I think the, the ship was nicely touched up. But again, if you can't blame. Sean Hargreaves did you know. a great job, just kind of. Yeah, but I've seen I've seen Ryan Church's concept art, and you know what I mean. That was like, gorgeous. Go look at him. That yeah, was gorgeous. Go look it up, guys. If you want to criticize the artist, go see his concept art. It will uh, be here was, on the screen somewhere yeah, right now. Which was knocked back. Uh, you know, I mean, this is what Ryan Church came up with. So, you know what I mean? Where a lot of people can turn around and say, oh my God, he killed the Enterprise and JJ. No, he didn't. Yeah. This is some of the stuff that wasn't signed off. And, you know what I mean? I have to say, I do like a lot of Ryan Church's stuff. Sean Hargreaves, I think, fine tuned it into a better. It just looked more to me like the Enterprise that it was used to. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, you know, as I said, you know, whether you love or hate it or take, it was fantastic to be at DST. It was fantastic hearing John speak about the design process and everything he tried to do with this ship. And, you know, it, it, it's not like, you know, if you know the design process and all that, and I think initially as well, going back at one point, once it got signed off, it went to the model shop. And, yeah. you know, they wouldn't make too many changes in the model shop because, you know, they're, they're fo- following off a brief. Yeah. But nowadays you've got CGI and so much. So it's not just, there's more hands in the cookie jar. So there's more ways it can change down the line. So, And one of know, those ways was, there's some images, and um, they'll be up here on the screen, where you see the pylons. And yeah. they're pure TOS, you know, straight, slender a little bit of a difference because there's a split in the middle and they're a little bit more bulkier but they're straight up but then when we look at the on screen you know they have them swept back which is still cool but you have you you can get some variances like that um from a concept through to the uh on-screen appearance yeah look there's not nothing to me what you call it at one point uh when you looked at the ship that there was nothing that could have been taken out for a refit and made it look more towards the cage and I know I, t- I think that's something initially that John and Scott had in their heads. Um, and I'm sure that's what they wanted. Look, to me, I'm happy with the design. I And, like, you know, there's two sides of this. You know what I mean? The, the TOS Star Trek fan, you can turn around and say, oh, my God, I want this to turn into that ship there. But it's TV 2017. And, yeah. you know... Who knows what's going on with Star Trek? It's at the moment. It's it's a bright future. Um, you know what I mean? Oh, There's we've news like uh, yeah, Georgia and spinoffs potentially, and mm. and so much more. Like you know, it's crazy. I like Giorgio as a character. I just can't see too much going with Mira Giorgio, but. Okay, that's, but the fact that, that could the be, fact that there's talk of spin-off Trek. There's talk, but there's been talk. There's been talk of you know Star Trek Reliant, which is something that I would like to see. But mm-hmm. again, it's it's going a little bit backwards. The Picard series is going forward. It's going to be interesting to see what way they come up with future technology. And I think you know I, I'd say again as fans, I'd say look to be honest with you, you know I mean do not expect your fancy Elkars. Do not expect what you've seen the Pastor or 
the well, the enterprise TV fit look like? You know, to be honest with you, I think they are going to be looking at what they can do technology wise. And I think, in fairness, if you are making a TV show and you're going forward, you need to be like that. Yeah. Look, am I going to miss my L cars that the Akutas did? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Am I going to miss my traditional British style? Yes, I will. But you know what I mean? We have to move with the times. It's 2017. If they keep the core concept of Star Trek, Picard's character is there. If everything falls into place, I'm happy enough. And to be honest with you, I'm actually very excited about the Picard show in the sense I want to see looking forward. And that's what's drawn me. You know what I mean? Yeah. TNG was ahead of its time for coming up with pads. Yeah, that we all use today. But I, 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 I've even been thinking. I know, I know we're going, we're, we're going off topic. Side track. <laughs> but uh, this is our little short trek as well. Um, pardon the pun. But um, I was thinking about Picard, and you know, talking about technology, uh, that'll that'll be something I'm really looking forward to seeing as well. But mm. the fact that Patrick is so heavily involved in it, um, yep. I wouldn't be too surprised if it's very character orientated. And if you think back of the mm. strong Picard arcs that we saw. Mm. There wasn't like you know inner light, you know, um, even like There's generations. Barely any antipathy. You're on the bridge for a few seconds. That's yeah, it. it's, it's, when 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 you're focusing on Picard <laughs> and stock footage of outside, it's straight up character, 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 yeah. and maybe P- the new Picard show could be just yeah, very be. character orientated, could be. Could something could different. Be. You never know. Could be, could be. But well, um, I'm, I'm for one looking to see. I'd like to see. I like to see the likes of. Whoever's working on the show, I would love to see them just being given a fresh lease of life. And yes. maybe saying, if we need a starship, okay, well, there's your traditionals up there. You know, you've got your saucer, your primary, your what there's your, your primary, your secondary, your nacelles. Yeah. But let's let's go forward. Just like we got in Enterprise with the J. Something fresh, something new. Exactly, exactly. And I think, you know, as a fan base, and I understand why people were looking so much for uh, a post nemesis because we spent so much time with these characters we want to see what's happened to them you know rather than where they came from you know because we, gone. We, we've seen um, them, you know, what else is gone Tuvok, we can start marking off a few yeah Vulcans anyway <laughs> <laughs> if you go by the JJ verse yeah exactly, anyway, exactly. We are completely anti- anyway <laughs> Enterprise 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 so yeah so John um we're we're getting to see some great uh, concept art, and again, you you mentioned about uh, TV in twenty seventeen, and obviously that gives a grander scope, even just to like uh, as teching on the Enterprise as well. And I think there was concept art of the as teching pattern, and but like even the detailing on the shuttle bay, you know, you have that, you know, your staggered lights that that we would have seen in um, previous Enterprises as well. The minutia. Which goes to show how much of a passion project this was. Because imagine, now, imagine, number one, you're a professional, you know, uh, production artist, concept artist. And you, someone rings you or knocks on your door and says, okay, you're doing the next Enterprise. That would literally stop my heart. I'd be like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, it's the kiss of that. You know, it, it's, yeah. it, come here, look, if you're a fan of the show, <laughs> you love the show, it's a dream. You know what I mean? Now, I know going back with... Uh, the NX01, like we heard the stories of between John and Doug fighting it over. And Doug supposedly gone on a sickie from a week from a job that he was in to, you know, <laughs> hammered out a design. But yeah, you know what I mean? I think in one sense with that kind of period, it's because it was a new ship and it was before, it's kind of an easier project to work on. But when it's the 1701 herself. The yeah, the, the one. It's the nightmare. Yeah. And I think in fairness, they have done a very very good job um i think you know you can see where where people can turn around and say oh the pylons didn't look like that the pylons can be taken off and different pylons can be put in yeah and the, look cells at the bridge module from the dropped. cage to the pilot yeah you know the, 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 the cells can be taken off and put in um yeah. the neck's different the neck can be taken off well saucer separation should be there so you know what i mean mm-hmm. the, the saucer will separate and believe it or not guys yes the tos enterprise did have saucer separation so there you go so mm-hmm. you, you know i think there was a lot of that bearing in mind um if you look at the impulse engines on the back of the the, the disco prize mm-hmm. again you say geez that looks very futuristic but is it really because if you look at how it looks in the cage or towards tos they're smaller 
and the process no, no, would be no, that as it gets a more advanced, things get smaller, more efficient. I, and then people might turn around and go, oh, it looks very Excelsior. Okay, well, but like Excelsior is a bigger ship. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know what I mean? There is a thought process there. Um, but when you bring up points like that, uh, and uh, again, being diplomatic, I do get where people are coming from. But as mm-hmm. you said, you know, this is a new production and we're talking about minutia here and there's going to be differences because... Discovery has a style palette that was decided by production. Uh, so they're going to bring in some of those little things. Uh, but like, as you said... Well, the deflector dish for one. Yeah, exactly. You know, and things may look a little bit bigger on... And I know, okay, yeah, the ship is bigger as well. But again, you know, it's it's within the disco um, series here. But yeah, I think that's a great point to raise that, okay, impulses are different, but they're bigger. So you could use that analogy to say that they're more advanced when they're smaller and sleeker. And that was Jeffrey's idea at the time that all the greebles and stuff are on the inside, all the technology, it's all hidden under yeah, the well, smooth, Jeff- tricky skin. Jeffrey's initially was that there would no kind of like, if if you look at what you call it, um, the nacelles and the actual warp engines themselves, the nacelles, as, as I said, I'm going to try to take this down right out of the Oh, <laughs> basically, if you looked at from from a history point of view, that like the whole idea, like if people were to look and say, Jesus, how would they support uh, they'd fall off. You're in zero gravity. It's future technology that can support. Yeah. Which is absolutely fine by me. It, it, you know, I mean, that's outside ticking the box. Yeah. And the smooth hull, um, again, futuristic. You don't need joints. You don't need the Aztec and paneling. Now, yeah. that kind of was put in more for cinematic and, okay, at the end of the day, practicality that, like... It's an easier ship to build. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to a degree. To build. But those again, angles are, you know, to, to, to get those. But know. the similar side is, you know what I mean? Like, realistically let's look what works on tv and like when we all seen the tmp enterprise for the first time mm. that aztec was absolutely fantastic and here's the panels that make up the ship moving away from the jeffrey's smooth hull because it's that advanced that everything was done yeah. on the inside we'd have one big massive piece of hull that we can plant on that we don't need any seams or joints and that's the enterprise that gene always wanted you know yeah, um, well, like, if we go into it and people say, Jesus, the, the grills on Disco Prize is blue. And if I go in here onto this part as well, Gene wanted them blue. Yeah. And if anyone that does buy the Polar Lights 1350 kit, they have the option of making them blue. Hmm. It was basically down to production and budget that they couldn't actually to light them. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of interesting points and where you see and when that's coming with. yeah and that's the dichotomy of the conversation that one could have when you're looking at these there's the practical shooting uh decisions made on the model itself and then there's the in-universe canon like of it as well you know the cool thing is that like if we look through some of the pictures we've got like the the photo on torpedo bays put in which again like was never really clearly and like on this model they're here but mm-hmm. we can actually see the same like there was a little phaser cannon here <laughs> on the ship. Yeah. You know, there's so much that, like, in fairness to guys, they knew where all his bits were, were, were on the TOS Enterprise to include them from looking at the show. They, they know when the Enterprise fu- fired torpedoes, when it fired phasers yeah. from the actual show, which came from nowhere. So anyone that wants to criticize and go back, even the remastered, it, it's... Wow, appeared from nowhere. Pick a spot. They've actually <laughs> put that in on the disco prize, which is really, really cool. And that kind of shows that yeah. the fan involvement in between John and Scott with this design. Like, I know more so... Chris, they designed the Bizarre Collectors that you're never going to see. Yes, well. yes. The um, detail and the work inside that is just like, unreal. I would have that framed, you know, as <laughs> as, as a picture. Because it's like, it's like something like... It's like like a, a, a Da Vinci scribble, you know, like it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. something inside the the the, the, the bizarre caps that are lovely and pearlescent and glowing and twinkling. But they've thought about the practical side of that. How would that work? What's it look like? And John puts it together, you know, Scott models it and it's like that. Now, there's your passion. There's your passion. Yeah. Well, yeah. Compared to what, what it actually was, was broken uh mirrors and christmas tree lights <laughs> as far as i can remember spinning yeah. around which still look good you still look good cool thing, but like to actually take that part of the ship and go through like it, i i really hope like fr- from this and because the way technology has gone like you know from the motion picture and the love for the relaunch of the enterprise we did get mr scott's guide 
yeah. to the Enterprise. Yeah. And I would love to see something down the line from Discovery that like a book is done on that ship. Um, you know what I mean? With the decks and, you know, bits yeah. and pieces, I think would be cool. Even Discovery yourself, you wouldn't like it. Go for fine. Yeah. Well, you know, it. I was thinking of Proper that. Proper book, dedicated. And, you know, deck by deck. But like, w- w- how cool, right? The, the whole Lemire, if they have done the inside of the buzzards, I can tell you now they have literally got a full deck line. Yes, yeah. but you remember? Okay, you, I know there was there, there was Mister St- Mister Scott's guide. I remember there was like the tactical book um, mm-hmm. uh, that that was out as well. But like, especially for Discovery now, because Discovery was always set up because they were coming up with reasons you know why there's like lateral transporters and why the ship looks like that because this was the time when the federation were testing new things like in the 50s and 60s where like mm-hmm. jets were awkward looking and sleek looking that would that'd be a great book i'd love to read like okay this is why the yeah. shran looks like this and we tried this on the shenzhou and when the the crossfield looked like this because blah 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 and then you have the constitution class as the show piece in that book that'd be if, so if larry never checks out there we challenge you larry yeah. Go write it. Yeah. Like, listen, Larry's just the, 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 the stellar <laughs> and, cartography and, and book from John Larry. Scott can do all the, yeah. The yeah. And we have John's book coming out in November yeah. as well, The Art of Johnny's. But that'd be a good project for both of them um, to sprinkle their magic over, I think. Because yeah, some people so. like ships. Make it so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, There's a demand. Meet but the demand. yeah, see, that's it. And like, oh, coming back to the Disco Prize. Um, I think there was uh, images there of the the windows being changed just to kind of go in line with like the discovery. Like, yeah. The, the, and I know there was comments uh, previously like that there was oh there was changes. But to it a- as well. again, like I'm gonna I'm gonna put my like from what I know between like you gotta realize if the clips I've seen of the latest Star Trek short, you know what I mean. I can see budget restraints by using discovery a thousand years in the future i don't know too much about it but like you know it's you know it, it, uh, there's a scene in the mess hall that looks exactly as if the ship hasn't changed so yeah. to me that says budget yeah. and set design you know what i mean and like how long is the enterprise sticking around for is for one we don't know um and you know what i mean what they're going to do about different quarters and stuff like that and change windows i know i know people are turning around and go ah oh, but that's still the window should be such and such but you got to think about this. You know this what I mean? Your that, mess hall on the Discovery is going to be the same mess hall on the Enterprise if we see it because it's already built. So the windows have to be the same shape, you know? Exactly. You know, and okay, you might have different colorings or you might have something like that and they might throw in a different table or something like that. But that yeah. is the fact. Like all the bridges have been redressed over the years. You know, there's a lot of money to go in and rebuild a brand new bridge for one episode. <clears throat> so there is a lot of... Look at Discovery. Shenzhou built... Discovery, separate, completely different bridge built. Yep. Um, and the sarcophagus bridge. Sarcophagus bridge. Like, and that, that was reused. And that, like, the floor was used in the Rebel Camp in the Mirror Universe. Yep. Like, how cool. You know? But again, there's the practicality. There's the revenue neutrality of requirement for production as well. So there's going to be that thought into it as well. And that goes back to what you mentioned earlier. That, you know, like, a meeting could go, John, we need this. It's for this reason. It needs to have this, this, and this, you know, and work your magic. But then they have to build that into practicality. So there, there are those kind of constraints. Like that's why the other side as well is is, is sound stage space. Yeah. You got to realize as well that there's so much going on in these studios. Mm. Like you know what I mean. Like the likes of uh, Star Trek Discovery, going in, they they book, they have X amount of sound stages. They can't just because they need the Enterprise. Oh, can we build a new set? Oh yeah, sure you can. Where do we put it? There's no sound size available, lads. Yeah. Sorry. You didn't book it. That's another side that you do have to think about. So, like, sometimes they are restricted into yeah. the actual space that they have. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's not that simple. That let's just go and build a bridge. You know, you got to realize there's practical sets involved and reusable sets. We get Spock's you know quarters. I mean? Oh, wouldn't be good <laughs> if they do a bridge. But look at the Spock's quarters. It's one of the first photographs that we've seen, and the windows are there. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, man. Oh, I can't wait now imagine what you call it if they decided right we've seen that towards the end of season. imagine if all of a sudden then we go into season two and spock has the discovery window and then every other window in the enterprise is a different shape yeah and in fairness these guys when they do think out things is initially as well it's 
to do with sets as well. Yeah. So I do think with the discovery window look, I think that's more to do with sets than anything to do with the designers. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And, you know and I mean? but again, there's like the, there's the style card that you but, know. Yeah, links, and then if you look at probably in. the bridge where people are giving out about say the dome mm. and the clear parts in the front again, my think behind that would be more so. You know, is that to fit in with redressing a bridge? Because if we look at the Shinjo, even though it's underneath, and we look at Discovery, it's just that style of view screen. Mm. So, again, it's dictating. And there was the view screen oh, on oh. in the cage. I'm after yeah. dropping something there. Um, there was the view screen on the cage, but then that disappeared um, yep. in the pilot as well. So, again, there, there's lineage and canon mm. into it there as well. So, yeah. I hope, I hope, but uh, it's awful hard to Look, call what's going to happen in, in season two, but I can't wait to see more. Minute, just the fans' reaction, I think, was very, very positive. The minute yeah. that ship swooped in, and I think it was very, very weird. And, you know, I got goosebumps when that episode ended mm. and you had the TOS team tune going off in the yeah. background. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> can't wait for next season. Yeah. Like, sure. I'm like. And number one and Pike and all, all the little. You know, the, the additions to her. And I know this is about the Enterprise, but oh. That's that's my first one. That's my probably first Star Trek model kit. I had the old AMT one. And then the cells did fall off because we're too bloody big. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That was on purpose. That was on purpose. I think that, Matt, that was Matt Jeffrey's point. You know, we're that far. That ship's that far advanced. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We, don't, we don't have the technology on Earth. Beyond our constructional cells. constraints. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no matter what glue you used. Um, <laughs> but. You know, like like that's my first love. Uh, she will be, and you know what? Fifty years of Star Trek, that ship has changed, and it's great to see so many incarnations of that ship. Yeah, and I think it should be more of a celebration and not a criticism. Yeah, um, I can't you know, wait to get my Eagle Moss one. Yes, um, you know, and that's amazing that Eagle Moss have it already. But you yeah. know what I mean? It's you know that's the old girl. Um, technically, it's not because there's a cage one before it, and I do have one up there. Mm -hmm. Um. Look, she's a beautiful ship. It's amazing to think that, you know, 50 years later, she gets another makeover. You know, it's just, mm. it's unreal. I think just just fantastic artwork done um, by the guys. I think sometimes they are criticized. I think it's one of the hardest ships ever to touch. It would be like if, you know what I mean? Say they 20 probably, years down the line, yeah. they decide to go back and do Star Wars and the new director's in there and says, right, I want you to reimagine the Death Star. Give me a new Falcon. Or a Star Destroyer. Ooh. Or an X-Wing. Yeah. And take away from, say, remove 25%. <laughs> you know, or it's... So. It, yeah. You know I, know, I know everyone can turn around and use a point, look at Star Wars. But like, as I said, TOS um, initially when it was aired was a TV show, which was initially set in black and white and color TV was coming in, hence why a lot of bright colors. Um, and if you do bear that in mind, uh, like... Star Wars was a big screen movie production, and but yeah, the ships do haul up. It's you remember you know, it's, it's, um, remember that point that was raised by John. Um, I think yeah, I think it was John, or it could it could it could have been it could have been uh, Rick when uh, we were talking about the Enterprise D, or it could have been the E. But the reason why the D looked the way it was is because they were shooting for four oh, by cool. three. Yeah, 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 TV. It yeah. was. It was. Um, it was for the four by three Chinese. format. And then because yeah. they went cinematic, we, we had, can lengthen yeah, we out had. the Enterprise now. And you're like, <laughs> square I TVs back in the day. Never thought about that. They had square TVs oh. back in the day, yeah. and that's why the Enterprise D looks. Square. It was. It was and a factor. Kind of, in all of a sudden, design. long screen, and that's what everyone was watching things in the Enterprise. Mm shape yeah reflected because you're, you're there holding up the enterprise going like you know that was my first ship for me it was the enterprise d was my first enterprise <laughs> you know made for so, a square tv made for a square tv you know the the the, the rolls royce of the fleet but um what fills the screen yeah exactly so there's as i said you know there's that dichotomy you know what drove production uh but then canon you know why does it look like it does in universe as well so it's having it's having both of those in your mind when you're looking at a design instead of going i hate it you suck worst design job ever i could do better myself okay well if you can do by all means go ahead um but listen i've always well, said it from day one 
to like it's something is subjective. Like, you know, you like it, you don't. Told, let's design the ship and you put in the original Windows. Yeah. On Discord, guys. And then you get a call from the studio saying, just to let you know, guys, you know, you say, well, right, what's the story going on with the ship? Hmm. Are you going to use any set interiors or anything like that? Are you going to be reusing sets? Because we need to know. Any scenes being oh, shot no, 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 no. Yeah. You're just going to see the ship. We're not going to see anything on the ship. We're not going to be on the ship. Oh, great. Steady. So you put it in the windows. Mm-hmm. Then you get a phone call. Going, Sorry, lads. Actually, just to let you know, we will be doing some interior shots. So, you know, yeah. we need to change things around. And one of the guys on the set wants to know, like, you know, like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we haven't budgeted for you, so if you can just do it on your own time <laughs> and come back to us, yeah, exactly. But you can imagine, you can imagine how much process goes between these. Yeah, exactly, ships. exactly. Constantly backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Yeah. Will they use a shuttle bay? We don't know. Yeah. Oh. Has that been designed yet? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, the possibilities. Has, possibilities. You know what I mean? Pikes, Pikes spin off. Pikes spin off. You know, I want to see more Enterprise. I'd love to see a Pikes spin off. Yeah. Imagine seeing engineering. Oh. I want to see actually. I, that's just yeah. Engineering, I don't know, kind of be cool, but mm. dated. Interesting. See the thing about it, like I always found the um, the Discovery's engineering room, I think was was a, a great tribute to the Enterprise engineering. You know, you had that kind of like the red when the windows were open. You had I'd that kind of red view going down. To see the second engineering department to come, but I do agree with you. If you do look up, what I think is the second engineering room is behind Stamets' lab kind of where the spore drive is and mm-hmm. as you said back i do it's think it's like where the grill is in in tos engineering you know, you and I think, yeah i think that's kind of like it's up that step and behind there is the warp drive which i do think is fairly fairly cool i'd love yeah. to see it also but you know another thing i'd love to see auxiliary mm-hmm. control <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, it came up so much in the original series i'd yeah. love to see it yeah exactly it. exactly oh. but you know um it's always good to have a conversation uh, about it and you know i was again kind of going back over what we said before it was great to see the positive um feedback on the enterprise because that means that people are happy let alone you know that they're good with the designers and stuff like that as well but you know i I think there was a lot of anxiety in the fan base to if we're going to see it what's it going to look like but i think they kind of hit the ball out of the park for sure uh, yeah i just think at this point you just have to take discovery for what it is Mm -hmm. um its style's been set uh, that's yeah. what it is we can turn around and say the main thing like where people will argue canon just like if they if they keep within canon i'm kind of happy and you know what i mean in the sense of canon i know some people that turn around and say looks okay fair enough well uh, i heard the discovery is getting its hair back and it's going to be a big well, wig peanuts. on the top of the saucer section <laughs> <laughs> well like i think i'm more important about the history and the timeline that fits into canon yeah as opposed to the look, the look of the ships i think to me i'm very very happy with the disco prize i think it looks absolutely great i think could have been done better we've seen some fan representation of putting it into the tos colors which mm. <laughs> looks even better but you know what i mean it doesn't fit but if you think about it um that's not, if, if but to you, me it's the history of star trek it's just the history yeah. part is important but you you raised an interesting point there actually as well because if you look at the trailers for season two and um, there's a lot less blue in mm-hmm. space and you could you can you can see the discovery changing slightly from scene to scene as well like the discovery looked slightly different you know when it was uh fighting the 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 caron and mm-hmm. it was flying through there like the color is really blue for me on that one uh, because the scene was very well lit. So, you know, the Enterprise looked quite blue and steel um, coming in on season two. Um, I didn't get that vibe from the little bits I saw in the trailer, so it could look a yeah, little bit closer. Yeah, so we see. It, it probably, the, the lighting to me has definitely changed, especially in the space scenes. So, yeah. that like, I'm not pushed on the color. I'm not pushed on, but yeah, you know, how the history, how the sections look now. The story, the arc, you know. Yeah, that is roughly like if as close as it can honor the look, but it has to be allowed to like, evolve. If if they show the Enterprise's bridge, you know, okay, if you can get away and not show it, brilliant. But if they have mind. to show it, like it's 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 the 1960s bridge is not going to work. The cage version of the bridge might because and the gas thing about it is, if you look at the cage version, is it's because the colors are dark. 
<laughs> tone mm. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty much the same bridge. <laughs> it's just missing red paint. Mm. You know what I mean? You know, I think it's a silly point to get caught up on. I think if you're a fan of a show, I think, you know, I mean, you're missing the point, you, you know, see past that. like, let's let's get behind Discovery, give it a chance. You know what I mean? I think, you know, there's a lot of fair points where fans do hop on the bandwagon and give out. Like I think Mary Shifo, fair place where she's studying into her Klingon history and all that. And I think the quote that was put out that like Klingons shaved their hair at a time of war and people gave out and said, like, they didn't do it in the Dominion Wars, which is fair enough. But hang on. Traditions. The Irish used to go to church every Sunday. <gasps> 20 years ago, you know, everyone was in mass at half 12. Now, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, we're still meant to do it, but it doesn't happen. Yeah. Everyone you know I mean? walks just, around the forgot. streets like a zombie now. Like, you know, people like said what you call it before, just like, you know, the Klingons weren't technically at war before the fight between the Federation. Blah, 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 but they were at war. Yeah. They were at war with each other. You know what I mean? That's why the Klingons weren't a threat because they were too busy fighting amongst themselves. So, you know what I mean? There was an explanation why the Klingons didn't have hair. It was given. It was never discussed in previous Star Trek. So, yeah, you know, this canon nonsense doesn't work. We know unless it, to me, unless it completely goes against canon, which is something that has happened where they turn around and over override it and pretend it didn't happen. That's where I would have an issue. But they haven't. Um, so, like the whole Klingon, but even look at the Klingons in TOS, they don't have much hair. And the interesting thing about that, or and no one complains about that, but <laughs> but think about it though, it's at a Cold War stage with the Federation. Yeah. So you know, I mean, their hair is starting to kind of you know. There is that you know. The, do we shave? Do we? You know, fancy let's words. keep it short. We're on a cold. This the is our detente. Cold War haircut. Yeah. This is our Cold War haircut. We're we're ready. Yeah. We're ready to shave our hair off because we're going to go to war with you guys yeah. again. <laughs> Won't take much. Won't take no. much, no. No no, no, no peacetime mullets on the, yeah. on, the, on the Klingons. No. So be wary when you see Klingons without long hair. Yeah. It's just kind of like, just, yeah, they're looking. Hipster for Klingons them. are dangerous Klingons. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Big cuts. Man, I, I love Klingons. how the conversation Big evolves. Cuts. It's it, it gets it gets funny. So um, <laughs> but yeah, I you know, through this conversation, um, <coughs> I hope in my editing that I've been peppering some fantastically gorgeous shots of all of the errors of yeah, the Enterprise along with today, the concept art the, as well. The new one. Because I know like I think just a couple of Americans are in there. Which is staying true, which is so cool. Yeah. And Come here, hats off to the sure, guys. Like, it's a hard job to do. In 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 the concept art, like there's the close ups on the insides of the nacelles, on on the on the underneath of the of the dry section, and and those markings there, where you have your your torpedo uh, ports as well. So like the, it's mm. uh, the 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 dedication of the people that worked on the disc Christ is you know not even up for discussion. It's evident, hundred percent, and I think it's about time they're getting their just desserts because you know they did a great job and i'm yeah. glad that people are happy with it and you know i i think it's 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 a tough thing to work on 52 years of yeah. uh, history because even another thing that they took for account mm-hmm. they're not on the cage version on the right the grill holes at the back yeah which is put in there which is fairly fairly cool yeah. that's they know their enterprises, guys. They know their enterprises. Exactly. Probably more than we know them. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I know there's some people out there that are like, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely out there, you know. But, you know, I hope this has been um, a, a, an adequate honoring of uh, the Disco Prize and every enterprise that came before her as well. And I'd love to kind of get your thoughts in the comment section below. So let us know um, which... 1701 do you like are you a cage fan tos tmp disco you know no no a b c's d's are bloody e's, no guys. hyphens just 1701. <laughs> ncc 1701 which is your favorite and we will allow the refit <laughs> and mirror universe <laughs> yeah, are, we, actually are we are we are we allowed to put in the iss there instead of us yeah. Yeah, yeah well it's actually the cage yeah. version we put it in there. Um, so, yeah, let us know in the comments below. But I think we wrap it up there, Chris. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned for enough. more Nerd Escape uh, in the near future where we will be continuing 
or Trek discussions. The next one keeps short and to the point. Exactly. You know, nice and short. <laughs> you know, because it's the only short tricks that we get over here, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Come on, <clears throat> CBS, <throat> man. <throat> get those deals yeah, written. You know, Reading the reviews just ain't the same. I believe it was... Reviews seem good. Yes. But, like... No, I'm going to put my hand up. I'm not really reading them because I don't want to because uh, it always gives up a bit too much. I've, I've seen, I, I, I've scanned through them. There seems to be positive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see them. Try and keep my head down. I'm annoyed. Um, but listen, soon enough, like we're, we're well into November here. So roll on mm-hmm. January. Not, I'm not wishing the year away by any means. I just want my, I want my discovery. You know, Doctor Who is keeping me uh, busy, but uh, I want my discovery and I want it now. No, Doctor Who on Christmas Day. What the f- that's for another another nerd escape. I know we talk a lot of Star Trek, but let's well, we're going to go beyond. Um, there goes Christmas Day. You know the OA, the Irish used to go to mass twenty years ago every Sunday. Oh, yeah. we like to watch our Doctor Who with our English friends every Christmas Day. Come Come on. On. Bit of love for the Hoovians. Come on. Anyway, I'm going to be lost this Christmas uh, Christmas Day around six o'clock. We have to watch very very disappointed. We'll have to. I'll have to, I'll have to actually, crack out the David Tennant. Some uh, I read and I had to laugh somewhere. I seen someone put up a post saying, "Oh my God, it's the one hour I get away from my family and have my little moment of sci finess." It's when that you're so just me. out of your turkey coma and you're like, yeah. uh. "It's like this is this is my TV. This is all I want to watch. You can watch yeah. whatever bloody Christmas movie you want. It's tradition. You can enjoy, but I'm gonna veg here and you just all have to watch Doctor Who with me." Yeah, it's ridiculous. Damn. I think I think to change dot org, you know. Uh, anyway, on that bombshell, we're yes. going to wrap it up. And as always, it's goodbye from me. Slang a fold, eat a lot, and good night from me too. Good night.